I think I will start with saying that um, divorce as such is not a thing people like to celebrate or, or to be happy about. It, it is connected usually with a lot of uh, problems, conflicts, and so on and so forth. And it, it applies in some cases also to the state. I see distinguished MEP from Slovenia. The collapse of Tito's Yugoslavia was not the friendly divorce, the collapse of the Soviet Union either. But 20 years ago, the Czechs and Slovaks, or Slovaks and Czechs, proved that divorce can be done in a civilized, normal, friendly way. So today, as the invitation says, we are celebrating and presenting two new books about that event. Uh, let me only say that uh, after the Velvet Revolution, you see Velvet Revolution, Velvet Divorce, we are velvet people. Uh, in November 1989, when communism collapsed in former Czechoslovakia, the new life started in the society and in a free democratic way, all the questions started to be discussed in a very blunt way. One of them, I'm simplifying it maximum to the maximum. One of the issues which became important was how to live together in the future, Czechs and Slovaks. Slovaks were not satisfied with the structure of the state. And a lot of discussion followed, you know, many meetings of the political leaders and so on and so forth. And in the end, in November 1992, the Federal Assembly of the Czech and Slovak Federal Rep Republic adopted the law on the secession, I think is the term, of the Czech and Slovak Federal Republic and the creation of the two new states. There were some problems, but there were no fightings. The mo most dramatic event happened in Bratislava when President Havel came there and people were throwing eggs at him in the square. As the time was passing by, I found out who those people were. <laughs> and they are not, today they are not proud of what they did at that time. But that was the only uh, evidence of animosity. Uh, so I will mention how I personally was living at the time. I followed the last month of Czechoslovakia from New York where I was permanent representative ambassador sent day by President Havel after the Velvet Revolution. When the division of Czechoslovakia came, I was asked by my people from Bratislava if I would like to carry on as the Slovak ambassador, so I did. And uh, I have really unique experience. My credentials for Czechoslovakia were signed by President Havel and my credentials to be Slovak ambassador were signed by very famous <laughs> and even more infamous Prime Minister Vladimir Mečiar. <laughs> the first credential I presented to Javier Perez de Cuellar, the then Secretary General, excellent Peruvian diplomat, and the second uh, credentials to Dr. Butrus Butrus Gali. So I served two different countries with two, two different Secretary Generals of the United Nations. So, so we met today. Uh, I would like to introduce you these two gentlemen who look very modest, but they are actually are very good. You will see it in a moment. Rick Zednik, Chief Executive Officer at Euroactive. He has written a book about, uh, the, about the country lost, then found. He will tell you about it, so I'm not going to go into details, but it, he follows the development of Slovakia since the last days of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, when his grandfather was born, and through all those years, as communists took over in uh, Czechoslovakia in February 1948, 
then the Prague Spring connected with the name of Alexander Dubček, which was crushed in August 1968 and ended with the Soviet tanks rolling in the streets of Prague, and then to the Velvet Revolution, uh, after, after that crushing of the Prague Spring, his father, Uri, went to start a new life in the United States. And only after the Velvet Revolution, when Rick goes to Slovakia, he started to be connected more deeply with his homeland, with his friends, and with his family. He will tell you about the book himself. And Paul Kane, I met him only this evening, but as I found out already, he's a man of many talents. He speaks several languages, at least Czech and Slovak. There are two different languages, please don't mix. There is no Czechoslovak, like some used to say before. And he speaks them really perfectly. And he has a very good uh, imagination for the 20 years after the divorce of Czechoslovakia, he took a bike and he was cycling along the border between the Czech Republic and Slovakia. And he got really very close look. From bike, you can see everything <coughs> as it is. And to, to find out how the people are living there and how the landscape look like and looks like. And he made uh, a book of photographs. And he's going to tell us about it. And he's going to show some photos to us this evening. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is very informal, friendly gathering. Feel free to help yourself, whatever you see. And uh, without any further ado, I would like to give the floor to Rick Zednik. Nech sa páči, máte slovo.